Logic has some really cool new features with their latest update, and in my opinion, there's three that are awesome and two that are kind of game-changing. Let's get into it. Welcome back to The Bank Guide, I'm your bank guy, Colin, and today we're talking about the newest Logic update, which to be fair, isn't a brand new update. This is anything 10.7.5 and beyond will have these features. This technically released the end of last year, but I always hold off on updating. I don't update right away because sometimes there's weird compatibility issues and bugs that come with that. So for example, now they're already up to 10.7.5, which will fix some of those bugs and other plugin companies and all those people have figured out anything that they need to tweak to make it work flawlessly. So I always hold off a little bit, which is why we're doing this video in February instead of the end of last year. And I also had to update to Ventura to get it. I don't know if you'll have to do that. It might have to do with which operating system I was on. I'm not even positive which I was on. So I held off for that reason as well because updating your Mac OS can create a whole slew of its issues in and of itself. Anyway, this is anything 10.7.5 and beyond and the features that come with this are really, really cool. Two of which I think are kind of game changing, but I wanna share my biggest three with you in today's video. So let's get straight into it. Starting with one of those game changing new features, which is nestled track stacks. Let's look at this in a session. This is really, really cool. So if you're not familiar with track stacks, this is basically where you just take several tracks and run them together in kind of like a folder. So for example, in this song, I have a whole bunch of guitars. All of these are guitars here. So I could take these and hit Command, Shift, and D on the keyboard, and that will give me an option to create a folder or a summon stack. They're both functioning the same, but on a summon, you can process it. So I tend to do that. So we're going to do a summon stack here, and then I could call this guitars, right? And now I could collapse this. I could process this. If you look at our mixer window here, I could process this like any other track. So all the guitars run through this and then I could do an EQ that affects all the guitars in one place. Really, really cool, right? That's not a new feature. The new feature is that now we can create a track stack within that track stack. So for example, let's say you have a guitars summing track stack, right? And Within that, you have two different types of guitars. Let's say you have acoustic guitars. So now I could take all of these tracks, create a new track stack and call this acoustics, right? And then I could take the rest of the guitars, I could fold that down, take the rest of the guitars and hit Command Shift and D and create a summon stack here of electrics. And now we have our larger folder of guitars that then within it has a folder of acoustics and then within it also has a folder of electrics, right? So it's really great for organization, but that's not the only thing it's really great for. In fact, I would say the more exciting part of this is that because you can process these track stacks, it creates opportunities for you to create a folder within a folder that you are processing separately. So for example, here I have a few different key sources. So I could create a track stack for these keys just call it keys. And I have this kind of cool broken out uh, Nord part where they're playing electric piano on three different individual notes. So I want to fold this into a track stack as well. We'll call this Nord. And then I have a second set of tracks here that are just synths. So we'll call this synths. And then I could process this Nord separately from this synth, but still have it within this key folder. Really, really helpful. I'll show you an example of that in one second. The last kind of way to think about it would be like within a drum kit, this drum kit has two snare samples that are used to make up the snare sound. So instead of just having them individually and processing them individually, I could hold Command Shift and D, create a summon stack, and now just call this one track my snare, will see it as its own individual track. I could even collapse this and I can process it just as a snare. I can pretend like this is now just my snare track, but it's actually two tracks together. So that's really, really helpful. And you can get creative with how you could use it. So you could have your vocals, all of your vocals in one place, but then you have your lead vocals and then your harmonies and then your backing vocals. And then you could process all the backing vocals, but not be processing your other harmonies and lead vocals, right? See how this could be helpful? Okay, so organization, but also processing. Speaking of processing, let's look at an example of actually processing these with what I think is the second super cool feature, not as much of a game changer, but really cool feature, which is that you get individual stomp boxes from the pedal board. So here I've selected that Nord that we broke out. This is like a cool little part that's just three notes split out. Cool, nothing to write home about. Nice little chord that's 
panned in a cool way. Now I can go under audio effects and under amps and pedals. Now I have stomp boxes in addition to the pedal board. And here I can pull any of the individual pedals from the pedal board just as an individual plugin. So for example, if I wanna throw the vibe on this Nord, I now just have that one plugin. I see the title of that plugin here. I don't have to have the whole pedal board uh, plugin and all the processing, all that. It's just a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier. Right, okay, so again, not game changing, but just a really nice little feature. Okay, so individual stomp boxes, that's number two. And then my number three, and this one is huge. I'd say that this is one of the hardest things I had to adjust to coming from Pro Tools was not having a proper clip gain tool. They finally put this in. Now to get there, you just go up here and you just select your gain tool. Now what this allows you to do is literally just turn up or down the volume of any audio track. It's a really cool feature, right? Now, you could do this on huge portions of your track. So if I just want to select all of these regions, I could turn it up for all of those regions. That can be helpful if you just record something a little bit too quiet or a little bit too loud. As long as it's not clipping, you could turn it down a little bit. So that's really nice. But another way that you could use it is much more granularly. So for example, let me go down to where we have some vocals here. On this lead vocal track, obviously there's going to be little areas where individual words are quieter than other words. Well, now, if you set your marquee to your second tool, you can hold Command and just select a region and then hold the Gain tool and turn up just this one phrase. And then you could go over to this next section. Maybe this is loud, you could turn it down, right? So you can get in and get really granular to make sure that your areas are not way, way different in volume. Now, you should use compression as your main tool to kind of contain the volume. But if things are all over the place, you really yell one word, but then you kind of whisper the next one, that might be too big of a disparity of volume. So being able to adjust this quickly with that gain tool is awesome. <laughs> that is like, a, I can't imagine not having this feature moving forward. Now, to be fair, you could do this before without the gain tool. You would just have to go in, you could select this with a marquee, click to break it out, and then go up here to region and go down to where it's gain and you could you know, change the gain there. And then you could go to this next section, select it, break it out with the marquee, you know, type in whatever different volume you want for that. So you could do it before, but it was clunkier compared to now with this new gain tool, I can literally just select with the marquee and turn it up or turn it down. It's amazingly fast, so much faster. It's gonna be such a time saver. Okay, so those are my big three, my favorite three new features, the nestled track stacks, the individual stomp boxes, and the gain tool. I think the two are game changers. I think it's super, super cool that we finally have nestled track stacks and this gain tool, and I'm really excited to have them as part of my workflow moving forward. Okay, before you go, I wanna give you something. If you struggle to get a professional sounding mix in Logic or wherever it is you're making music, I put together something that's really gonna help you out. It's a six step checklist that walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them wherever it is that you're making music. It's completely free from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It's helped out thousands of people already. So be sure to grab it, it's completely free. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Which of these features are you most excited about? Or are there other features from this update that you're excited about? These aren't the only new features in this update. So let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time